day friends, welcome to day 12 of Inktober 2018. The prompt for today is the man in the moon's still asleep on a heap of exhausted fox sheep. Uh, so this prompt came about because I was flipping through my journals, uh, looking for things that I still might want to draw through Inktober or have a look at, revisit, uh, reimagine in some type of way. And I saw a lot of moons with faces in there, just from random things. There was um, a lot from when I was drawing those vintage ladies sitting on the moon, back when I was putting together the muses for um, Star of Wonder, the she leapt off the page that we did for Christmas last year. Still really, really love that. Um, fun fact, that is one of like the least well-received videos that I've ever put out on YouTube. <laughs> and, um, and so I'm not saying that for any other reason than I just want you to know that you could literally be so proud of something and think it's going to do so great and it won't. And that is just the nature of social media. And I want to put that out there it should not matter to you. Like not once. I mean, I always look at the numbers because I've got to know like what's going well. And if I'm having a bad period, like what the content might be doing and why it's happening. Um, but as far as not putting that out there, like I am still so glad that we did that. I'm still so happy to have done it. It's still one of my favorite um, set of images to look back at. It's, it still provides me with so much inspiration to this day. Um, and I, so I think this is such a random tangent that I feel like I'm going to get on, but I know that there's sometimes a pressure to put things out there that you think will do well, or you think will, um, be received well. And, or you might even think that if you work really, really hard on something well enough that it will just be received well, like you kind of earned the, um, the views or the, the engagement that you, you might want. I'm just here to tell you, it, it never happens. <laughs> like, you will receive traction on the weirdest video you have. You will get, you know, your Instagram, your most favorite Instagram post will be something that you probably didn't even think would do very well. Um, as far as preempting the reception of your content, I think it's one of the biggest, um, biggest, mm, maybe wrong moves we could do um, because it, you get into this false sense of security that if it happens once, if you've predicted how something well, how well something will go once, that it will go that well again. And then you start making decisions differently. You start changing how you go about doing things. And then, um, and then you're suddenly doing a string of projects that you might necessarily not have chosen for yourself. So I just wanted to put that out there because I know I did fall into that trap for a hot minute. And, uh, and it only took me one or two videos to realize, oh, this is really not what I want to be doing. And I have the freedom to do whatever I would like to do. So why don't I just do that? <laughs> At the end of the day, you've got to be the one that likes your content the most, right? Because you're the one that has to sit down and do it. So just a little PSA for anyone out there. But the, um, the moon, sorry, random sidetrack tangent. The moon uh, was was one of those motifs that was running through that that time when I was putting the muses together. Also, when I went to uh, see the Moulin Rouge musical and I made that journal page with the windmill that spins in my journal, um, the moon on the face on the moon there I had. So I just wanted to find a way to incorporate that into Inktober some way because I knew I wanted to to tackle that. Also, um, I didn't know how to do that. So I just thought, well, what do people think about when they think about the moon or like the the sleeping moon? And I thought, well, when they're sleeping aren't sheep jumping over the moon or something? People count sheep to fall asleep. I don't necessarily have that problem. I can fall asleep at anything. <laughs> um, if I'm tired enough, I'm just gone. But yeah, I thought about the sheep and I thought, well, they could just be, I don't know, stacked up. I, I almost thought the sheep were going to be clouds because I knew their bodies looked like clouds. Don't know much about drawing animals, but I did know that. And I thought, well, maybe they, the moon could be like resting on some clouds. But then I thought it might just be fun to have like a pile of sheep. Like as soon as they jump off the moon, um, they're just like stacked in a heap. They're all asleep. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. It just all kind of came together the way it did. And it was kind of random. The reason I wanted to have them have fox faces is nothing super artistic and crazy. I just didn't think it would be enough to have a regular sheep in Daisy's world. I thought she would definitely see something that was sheep-like, but not necessarily. She's a little paranoid. So these sheep, these seemingly innocent sheep have um, fox faces. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. So I should have said wolves. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> I've done it now. I'm not going back. I'm not changing it now. They're just going to be fox faces. You know what? It's Daisy. She's like that. Um, 
Wow, I should have thought about that before I did it. There are so many prompts though, honestly, it was so hard to come up with 31 of them that like, this was one that I had rewritten a few times, so I was so busy trying to get some kind of rhyming going on, I don't even think I thought whether it was sheep or not. Anyway, the sheep jumped over the moon, right? People count sheep to fall asleep, but it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. I don't know, there's something going on there, I really don't care to figure it out though. Anyway, so this is, uh, this is the piece that I end up doing for it. Daisy looks kind of oddball in this, but I'm not hating it. And I think it was just a really fun concept. I love the moon. I love the little guy in the moon too. I wanted him in the moon. I didn't just want the face with the moon this time because I've done that before. I wanted to try something different and have the moon open up and have him in there. Looking at it now, it kind of looks like a big pokeball <laughs> stacked on top of some sheep. Um, but I know it's a moon, so that's all that matters, right? Okay, I got some questions from Instagram. I'm still going to uh, get around to answering. So let's just kind of speedball them today. What kind of ink do you use? It is linked down below. It's a Japanese Sumi calligraphy ink and it is made from vegetable oil soot, I think is what we found out. So I think it might be vegan. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> um, it's, it comes in a stick form as well. So if you have one of those little grinding little ink wells, you can get the stick form and grind that down with some water. I prefer it in the liquid because I just don't need the extra hassle of grinding, but that's that. Uh, what's your favorite art journal that you feel is good for watercolor, fine lines, and Copics? So there's none that really works with all of them, but if you're looking for a Copic marker journal, the Render No Show Through journal is the one that won't bleed through. I have done a review on that where I tested all our mixed media faves in there, and it didn't hold up well to watercolor at all. Um, but as far as pens and pencils and Copic markers, was fantastic. So you might want to check that out if that's something you want. But as far as one that works with everything, you're going to have to compromise something in each journal. So um, Copic markers are usually going to just bleed through anything and everything. People say that if you put a barrier, like if you put gesso on the page or if you have a layer of acrylic paint underneath, it's not necessarily going to bleed through. The problem I have with that is that once you have that barrier, the alcohol marker ink isn't seeping into the substrate and that that process is what actually smooths out the color and makes it a really flat lay of color which is why I think a lot of people purchase alcohol markers because they don't leave all that streaky kind of um, texture when you're when you're illustrating and, and rendering so the reason I would say that that kind of falls flat is in the end if you're gonna have a streaky texture look you might as well just buy some water-based markers, some water-based textures, like you don't need the alcohol markers if you're, if it's just going to be streaky anyway. That's just my personal opinion, but if that works for you, then I'm obviously not going to um, argue against that. But I would just say that if you're going to have to sacrifice something, my personal favorite journals are the Dilutions journals. I just love them. I think they're great for illustrating. I think they're great for mixed media because the cardstock holds up to a lot. I can cheat some watercolor effects in there, but if I scrub the page too hard, it will start to peel. And also it has a bit of a problem with um, paint markers. It can hold a lot of wet media and, and media with water content. The paper just doesn't like to be scrubbed at that point. So if you can get it down on a page without having to move it around a lot, you'll have a better success and that's how you can cheat some of those effects. Uh, but ultimately Diane did make sure that it would, it would work for a lot of her um, very heavy ink applications. So it will hold a lot, but also Diane doesn't put the ink on and then scrub over it with a paintbrush. So that's why it is, um, you've got to kind of cheat it a little bit. Uh, the other journal that I would recommend if you're looking for something that kind of um, is a little bit different but uh, can stand up to watercolor is the Jane Davenport Mixed Media Journals. I have a few of those. The trade-off for that one is the paper isn't that um, isn't that thick. It is just a, um, a kind of a thin watercolor paper and it is cold pressed, but the texture on the front of the paper is very different to the texture on the back. This is regular for cold pressed watercolor papers or um, because the, it's just the way that they're pressed. The um, the texture or the, the grain, the tooth on the, the front of the page might sometimes be very different to the one it is on the back. Sometimes you can find that some that are very consistent and have that nice same texture on both sides. Um, but that would be a very, I think you're starting to up the price there at that point. So yeah, the, um, the paper in there, it just is a problem for me when I'm working on a double page spread. Like I've got a left side and a right side, pardon me, I'm about to like, <coughs> oh, tissue. Pardon me. <coughs> I'm falling apart. You have no idea how, how long I've been holding those in and they're like, no, you're coming out now. 
So you would swear it was spring here. Everyone's pumpkin spice crazy and I've still got allergies like it's May. All right. Uh, the, um, the, the page, if you're going left side, right side, the texture on the front of that watercolor paper is, is very different to the back. So if you're using a lot of the texture in your watercolor pieces or with your pencil crayons or something, you're going to notice the difference between the left side of the page and the right side of the page. It just irritates me. It's not the end of the world. You can totally work around it, especially if you're not one that does a lot of double spreads in your journal. Um, but also the Copic markers will bleed through that. And like I said, the paper isn't very... Um, thick, so it will warp a lot with a lot of your heavier water application and your water washes. Um, so those are just my, my recommendations. Like I said, you're going to have to have a bit of a trade-off. There's no ultimate journal that works well with everything. I don't know what kind of a paper would, but I'm assuming uh, a, pa a journal formulated with a bunch of different papers in the signature might be the solution. I just don't believe it exists yet for um, like in any retail stores. I know that there are some online uh, sellers, like on Etsy sellers that bind their own journals. So um, you could always reach out to them and see if they do like mixed papers. Um, actually, if you are a seller, um, please just leave your shop link or something in the comments below. If you're interested in doing these or you already have on offer your um, mixed paper journals, I think that'd be really great for everyone to check out. And I'm a-okay with you leaving a plug for yourself down there because it is something that I'd probably like to check out as well. So, um, so please, any sellers out there, just uh, leave your link to your store down below and we'd love to check out your mixed paper journals, please. I'm looking for specifically like A5 size, so if you've got a, if you've got a quick link to that, I'm, I'm gonna click it. <laughs> okay, Disney villains, you have to marry one, kill one, and be best friends with one. Go. Alright, uh, marry... I'm gonna go with Gaston, because he's fit. Uh, kill one. I'm gonna kill Hades, because he's the devil. And be best friends with one, Cruella de Vil. Absolutely 100,000 million percent Cruella de Vil. I feel like we already are best friends. <laughs> uh, what Disney movie, home, or castle would you live in? Okay, Disney questions. Um, uh, do I want to be a mermaid? I'm not quite sure, I don't know. That palace down there isn't, like, everything I need it to be. Oh, I know, I know, I know. I want to live in Cinderella live action. I want to live in the castle. But I want to live with Kit. <laughs> like, he has to be in there. So those are, my, um, those are my stipulations. What makes your heart flutter? What makes you happy cry most? When do you awkward laugh? Okay, well, don't laugh at me, but my heart flutters when I watch um, videos of kittens. I don't know what it is. I'm just a crazy cat person. I watched this video the other day where these kittens were raised with bunny rabbits and they didn't walk around like normal kittens. They just hopped everywhere. And uh, my heart wasn't fluttering. I swear I almost had an aneurysm. Like, it was so overwhelmingly adorable. And um, I, I went straight to Google. I was Googling where to buy kittens and... How many can I have in a house before it becomes too much? And how much are bunny rabbits? Like, I was just going nuts. Um, yeah, that really makes me going. I don't know what it is. It's, it seems like a problem to me, actually, that I, I feel for kittens and cats and, and animals more than I do for humans. I don't know what it is. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one, though, although some people might not want to admit that. <laughs> this is I feel like humans give themselves a lot of their own problems, but animals are given a lot of problems by humans, so I don't know. I just, I love cats. I probably feel more for cats than I do for any other animal, though. So yeah, don't quote me on any of that. But yeah, heart flutters at that. What makes you happy cry most? Um, I don't really happy cry. I'm more sad cry because I'm dramatic like that, but um, worship at church guaranteed just a mess like a flood of tears and they're all happy and um yeah that's it that's why i have so much hill song in my uh, general jams playlists <laughs> and uh makes you awkward laugh i cannot tell you because it's so bad uh, but my best friend and i have a lot of inside jokes and they're usually pretty inappropriate and not for public consumption and uh Whenever someone brings up a subject that we have one of those jokes about, I am just awkwardly laughing. If she's around, it's even worse. We were kicked out of a class in high school because of it. It was just a mess. But um, yeah, I can't tell you because it truly is awkward. <laughs> I would laugh about anything like that. So on that note, I'll be back with you uh, this afternoon for a Whimsy Ween video. I'm sketch flicking Edward Scissorhands. So until then, bye.